Uh, he's a writer, he's a poet, he's a champion. Please welcome to the stage, King Kang! Thank you very much, and it's great to see such a big crowd here. Uh, today, my main talk will be on Abbott's Indigenous Advisory Council, which was selected by Tony Abbott, not elected by our people. Yeah. I think after 226 years, we are quite capable of electing our own representatives, not, not to advise governments, but to direct governments on Aboriginal affairs. Before I go into it, I'll read you out a Twitter by the Chair of the Indigenous Advisory Council. Google Marching March. What a bunch of whinging up themselves wankers. A total waste of time. I'm up to the footy and a weekend with the kids. Now, I've not seen any wankers out here. I'm seeing people exercising their democratic rights to protest against a deficient government. Now, the, the, the chair of this Indigenous Advisory Committee doesn't have much say over the rest of you, but he does have people. He has the ear of Abbott, and what he is talking to Tony Abbott about is not what we want. Now, I'll give you a classic example. Just after Abbott got into government, he cut $13.4 million of Aboriginal legal services. Now, two, two things could have happened there. The IAC could have either shut up and said nothing, which means they shouldn't have been there in the first place. The second thing is they did give him advice not to do it. Well, heads up, fellas, he's not listening to you. So what they should have done there and then is walk out in protest and resign. No, they're staying there. And it's, it's very funny that uh, the chair, Warren Mundine, should make this statement publicly on Twitter. Abbott himself has said nothing about these marches. Why has the IAC chair chosen to uh, call everybody here wankers? It sounds like he is protecting the house of his master. Yeah. Now, while the rest of us are out there fighting, he is sitting there uh, posing with his nice little family portraits with Tony Abbott. We have to take control of Aboriginal affairs. We have to have a voice in who are speaking for us. So far, I've heard two voices and the Indigenous Advisory Council, the chair, who continually harps on about children going to school. Now, I agree with that. I'd like to see every Aboriginal child in school today. Oh, not today, Sunday. Sorry. Monday to Friday, every Aboriginal kid in school. But any thinking person, any educationalist here today will tell you, you have to have the environment for learning. Now, here in the city, our children are being harassed by the police going to and from school. So. What, do they feel, really feel like going to school? No. Out in remote areas, we have people without running water, we have such oppression after the Northern Territory intervention. We have people who have been stripped of their dignity, who are living on basic cards, can't even manage their own finances, they are treated like children. So you expect those people to be responsible for sending their kids to school. This is a joke because it's only a way to turn the blame back on the recipients of oppression and excuse the government for their inaction and incompetence. We have had, we have had generations of incompetent governments who neglect the rights of Aboriginal people. Now, we should have the right to elect our own bodies. The, the opponents of this will, and I had this pointed out on Facebook, you had ATSI and you blew it. Well, ADSIC was not a failure. Since ADSIC, we have gone gravely backwards. ADSIC was dismantled by the dishonest John Howard, who used his media cronies to uh, demoralise the whole of ADSIC population by a few people who were corrupt. There was some corruption there. 
They got bought out. But Howard used the media to demonise all of ASIC and dismantle it. Let me tell you, there were thousands upon thousands of hard community working people under ASIC who were doing some progressive programs. So because a few were corrupt, he dismantled it. This was a state and nationally elected body. If we use the same rule of law with our government, state and federal, federally elected bodies, there was no government in the history of this country who would have served one term. So why, when we get one chance at it, because of a few people, are we dismantled? I say if that's the case, dismantle the whole government system and have anarchy. You cannot have two rules in this, in this country. And if we, when we get another elected body, yes, after 226 years, of an oppressive regime telling us what to do, we are going to make mistakes. Let us make the mistakes. We need cooperation from the broader society, and we will make some mistakes, but I tell you what, we'll do a bloody better job than any government has to date. Yeah. And, yeah. and I'll be tell you, those people who are sitting on that committee, half of them are not Aboriginal, what, what in God's name is the CEO of Rio Tinto doing on there? What advice would he give Abbott? His advice would be get the people off the land so we can mine it. What, what, are, what are the CEO of West Bank doing on there? Where are the community voices? Where are they? Abbott is also talking about repealing Section 80C of the Racial Discrimination Act so you can racially build white people. Right, I was brought up in Queensland. You know what we were called when we were going to school? Rock apes. We can go back to that, can we? Because I tell you what, I will not allow anybody to call our people those disgusting names, as I will not allow to be in the presence of anybody who calls anybody else a racist man. <laughs> it's an absolute disgrace that we have come all this way and we have so many talented people in our communities yet we are not allowed to elect our own people. We are not allowed to have a say. Well, I'm going to have a say. I'm here, Cheryl, my wife, we have petitions to sign to get rid of this Indigenous Advisory Committee and demand the government allow us to have our own elections, not to advise them, but to direct them. We are going to take, we're going to take control of this I'm going to fight this till we get our say, and I'm demanding from this government and uh, governments that follow, we will not tolerate this selection process any longer. We are not children, we are intelligent adults who can determine our own futures, and I'll tell you what, we will determine our own futures. <laughs> And to close up, I want to lend my support of solidarity to other groups who are here. Under the Abbott government, we have seen the vilification, the, the demonisation of asylum seekers. He calls them illegal. That in itself is an illegal term under the conventions of the United Nations. How dare this man demonise people who have already suffered and suffered beyond what most of us comprehend. And how, how dare he treat them the way they're being treated. Why can't, why can't he open up to the public about same-sex marriage? What's the problem with that? I've got one simple answer to that. People get married because they're in love. What's the opposite of love? Love is hate. When you marginalise any group of people, you produce hatred against those group of people. Yeah. What is wrong with this man? Love is yeah. All he's doing, when, when he cut $13.4 million to ALS, he also granted $3 million to the mining companies to fight, help them fight national title acts, uh, national title cases. Gina Reinhardt in a mob need $3 million. My goodness, that's bloody loose change for them. Now today, let's join in solidarity. I'm great to see that people are here. And I'm sorry, Warren, they're not wankers. Yeah. 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 Two things.
was going, I had to push all the three losers and I had to get a parking ticket on the way out. Thank you.